Today on Unpacked. At its worst, my right leg was five and a half kilograms heavier wow. than my left leg. The doctors themselves didn't even know what it was. Were they at least giving you treatment to try and deal with the swelling? As soon as my compression is off, within half an hour, I can actually feel my limbs starting to fill. I have no control over whether or not in the next five years it could be in my arm mm. or it could be in my, on my other leg, even more than it is right now. Living with lymphedema, what is it and how does it impact one's life? We have two guests who are here to share their stories. Let's unpack. Sihe Ganda was in her first year when she was advised to receive medical attention for the swelling on her legs. It was only then that she learned that she had lymphedema and got to understand the condition that she had endured for eight years. After years of battling lymphedema, Capetonian Simone Lowe Blackenberg has undergone surgeries and received treatments to manage the condition. The impact that the condition has had on the wife and mother has caused limitations to her daily life. These are their stories. Let's unpack. Sika, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. And then joining us via VideoCon, we have Simone. Simone, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me as well. I look forward to our conversation. Sikhi, let me start with you. What is your, uh, how would you explain what lymphedema is? So lymphedema, um, on a more technical term, mm. is a blockage in your lymphatic drainage system. So yes. meaning that your water in your body doesn't flow normally as it's supposed to. Yes. And therefore causes a swelling in either your arm or your leg. And for me, it's my leg. Started off as just one leg, but has now turned into both of them. Uh, on your side, Simone, how would you explain lymphedema and your specific lymphedema? Yeah, so I think that's really well described. Um, mine was actually initiated because of having cancer. Mm. Um, and I had a whole lot of my lymph glands removed. And because I no longer had lymph glands in my right groin and pelvic area, the lymphatic fluid essentially couldn't drain and couldn't flow. Um, and this leads led to the lymph fluid building up um, significantly in my right leg um, and eventually over many years actually changing from lymphatic fluid buildup into um, a buildup of adipose fatty tissue. Can you maybe um, give us a bit of background as to um, the cancer and what led to those having to be removed? Sure. So when I was 23, I was diagnosed with a malignant melanoma on my right shin um, and at the time was relatively quickly dealt with. Um, I had the I had the mole removed um, and I had a skin graft. And at the time they said, you know, they did everything they needed to and, and I was in remission and fine. Um, and that was the case for six years. But then when I was 29, they found that the cancer had come back and this time, unfortunately, much more aggressively. Mm. And it was now in my lymph system. And it was essentially in, in my lymph system, in my groin area and my pelvic area. Mm. And so what they had to do was they had to do something called a lymph block which is where they remove all of the lymph flat, all of the, all of the lymph glands in the mm. affected area. Mm. Uh, so they removed all of the lymph glands in the area, found that there was again more cancer than they actually thought that there was. Um, and so what followed was I had um, three operations and then I had to have um, six weeks of radiation mm. to make sure that they had gotten, gotten all the cancer out. Mm. And unfortunately with the removal of the lymph glands and then the radiation as well, which really kills all, everything in the area, good tissue, bad tissue, and everything else, um, this then immediately kicked off, um, kicked off my lymphedema. Mm, mm. So at the time, I mean, how did the diagnosis of the lymphedema come about? Um, was it something that the doctors already were anticipating because they removed your lymph nodes? Yeah, so I was quite lucky in that the doctors were actually very proactive with me. Mm. So they did say to me at the time, you know, we've had to take out a lot of lymph glands. We've had to radiate the area. You may suffer from something called lymphedema, which mm. is the swelling of the limb. Um, and so watch out for that. And they already immediately put me in contact with um, a lymphedema therapist here in Cape Town. Mm. Um, and I immediately started to see her kind of in anticipation of there um, being an issue. So I was lucky in that the doctors were very proactive 
often people are left with lymphedema untreated for many years mm. because people actually just don't know what how to treat it and it often goes undiagnosed. Can you, Sikha, take us back to when you started experiencing, you know, complications mm-hmm. that you knew something was wrong building up to your formal diagnosis? So I've had lymphedema for eight years this year and four years of which did I only know it was lymphedema. Mm. When I started um, going to see doctors because of a swelling of a leg, um, at that time, elephantitis was still a thing. So people assumed that it could be that, it could be this, but the doctors themselves didn't even know what it was. So like she said, um, there's so many people live with this without even knowing that it's lymphedema Mm. because it's not common. Mm. It's not something a lot of people suffer from and... Her circumstances of suffering from it is way different from mine because yeah. I didn't have cancer. Yes. I basically had nothing, but my secondary cause of it just came out of nowhere. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So you just experienced a swelling of the leg and of it led you to go to the doctor. Exactly. Was there pain associated with it? What What was the, the other things? And when mm. we say swelling, how, how big are we talking? So early stages, there wasn't really pain, but I was very active in sports and stuff in school. So it became concerning and I would always assume, no, it's probably because I'm putting too much tension in soccer and netball. And then it became a thing that was so consistent that Mm. it would grow beyond its normal state. Mm. So waking up, it's okay, the swelling is there, but in the course of the day when it's too hot or it's too cold Mm. or I'm walking a bit too much, Mm. then the pain would start, then it becomes red, then Mm. I can't even walk Mm. to that extent. And then it became concerning. Mm. And my dad, you know, like suggested maybe we should go to specialists. And we tried, we took x-rays, blood tests, everything. And everything seemed fine. And it was only four years ago did I find out it was lymphedema. So you went for an entire four years prior to that of being undiagnosed, going in and out to doctors, Mm. were they at least giving you treatment to try and deal with the swelling? I did receive (laughs) um, some medication that would drain out the water. Yes. Although the side effects were a bit too much for me. Not being able to sleep, losing appetite, losing weight, going to the bathroom literally every after two seconds because Mm. I was draining all the water. Yes. But I was still being too hydrated so I couldn't deal with that and I had to take a break from that yes you know considering of being in school Mm -hmm. so yeah Mm. okay so when um uh, what happened that you finally found a doctor that was able to say actually this is what it is Mm. it's so weird because it took a stranger (laughs) to tell me what it was wow I was in varsity my first year of varsity and this guy that was friends with my friend kept staring at my leg. I mean, that's what people do actually every day. They stare. And he was like, "Um, I have a cousin who has something like yours, but I'm not sure if it's the same thing. Yeah. But I think it's this and that. Um, Try doing some research. I can take you to a doctor and you'll see like if it's the same thing. Mm. And it turns out it was the same thing. Wow. Because I was so tired of taking advice from everyone. Yes. Be it... Western medicine advice to traditional advice. Mm. It's Mm. a conflict of not knowing what to choose, what to believe. So I felt like that person came at the right time where I was just a bit more open to knowing what's happening because I was so tired of being gullible and believing people that, no, it might be this, it might Mm. be that. So, yeah, I went to the doctor and Mm. the procedure started happening. What were some of the things that people were saying it is and what were some of the things they were saying you should do? Mm. So (laughs) with Western medicine, Mm. it was, no, it's elephantitis. And I was like, girl, it's not elephantitis. Like they've been telling me it's not that. Yes. And then when it came to traditional, which was a conflict with me coming from a spiritual family. Yes. So people were like, no, you need to see like or something that might help you. There's some herbs that might help you. Yes. And trust me, I tried everything. Yes. And I noticed that everything was just momentarily. Mm. It would just happen for that moment, for that one month, two mm. months. Mm. Then after that, it's back to normal. Yes, yes. So I even considered me as a person and my belief. Am I really believing in the medicine or is my thoughts and my mindset elsewhere? Mm. You know what I'm saying? So... 
I think also, besides it being a physical thing, it's more mental than anything. Mm. Yeah. I, like, do you believe in the medicine that you are taking? Because yes. if you don't, it's not going to work out. <clears throat> yeah. So that's why the spiritual world and the traditional world didn't work out for me. Yes. And then, yeah, so that's what happened. Okay, so now that you've di you discovered that it's lymphedema mm. and you say the treatment started, what was that treatment? So the <clears throat> treatment that was started was basically... Um, um, compacting the tension of the swelling. Mm -hmm. So they had a, um, a bandaging method that would use to compress it. Mm. So I started and doing that. Comp they compress your entire leg. Mm. But yes. with me, my um, <laughs> lymphatics ends on my knee. Yes. So yes. it doesn't go up. So it only ends here. So I'd have like a, a sock that I'll put on. Yes. Every day. It's very tight. I, oh, similar to like the compression socks that you Yeah, the normal with. compression yes. sock. And yes. then you'll, you'll just have to bend it further. Yes. Just to, you know, uh, compress it even. Yeah. And then I'd have pills as well that would drain. Very similar to the ones that I used to take when mm. I was younger. And I wouldn't, the side effects weren't as effective. Mm. I think maybe it's because I was younger then, mm. you know. And yeah, those are the main things, I would mm. say. So just to be clear, they, they didn't say to you that there is a cure, there's something they can do and then it's gone. This is like long-term treatment. Mm. Yes. It's basically measures to take to reduce it more than to cure it. Yes. Yeah, yes. so it's just how um, measures you can use just to go about your everyday life. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So it's not something that can just go away. In the case of you, um, Simone, what did the doctors uh, advise for treatment? Yeah, so before I answer that question, maybe it's a good time for me to just um, just tell those that don't know, there are two different types of lymphedema, and it's actually great because you've got both on the show. Mm. I've got secondary lymphedema, which comes on post, often a cancer. Mm. So it will be as a result of a removal of the lymph. Mm. And then you get primary lymphedema, which you're actually born with, which mm. may sit stagnant in your body for long periods of time. And there may be some trigger event which mm. brings it on. But it's not due to a cancer and it's not due to the removal of lymphedema. Yes. Yes. So you've got the primary and the secondary, secondary lymphedema. The treatment of which um, are, actually both, are, are actually the same. Um, unfortunately, as you touched on, there's no cure for lymphedema yet. Um, there are many trials being done all over the world uh, to try and figure out a way to cure lymphedema, but certainly up until this point, there is no cure. It's all just about the management mm. of the condition to try and ensure that the limb remains um, in as good a condition as possible, which is mm. often very, very difficult. Uh, so the treatment that I followed was um, a variety of different things. I've also, I think, tried absolutely everything under the sun from juice fasts to keto diets mm. to um, herbs to every. I've, I've tried it all. Um, but the, the kind of more traditional treatment is something called MLD, which is manual lymph drainage. Mm. So it's a special type of massage that is done, which tries to empty the lymph glands mm. and tries to encourage your body to um, learn new lymph um, roots so that the lymph fluid can can learn to root in different mm. ways. So what you'll do is you'll have 45 minutes to an hour of the special massage, which opens up the lymph glands, and then you'll have the bandaging, uh, which mm. has been referred to already. And this is called, it's multi-compression bandaging. So you compress, you are bandaged in lots and lots of different layers, um, and this tries to move and apply pressure to the to the limb in in different areas. Mm. And so, at a stage, I was actually having this treatment four times a week mm. um, to try and help the limb, the, the the limb. And then, in between that, I was in very very heavy custom made compression. Mm. So it was a compression garment that had been that was made in Germany. I got a new one every four months, um, and it was a class four um, compression garment. Um, which had been customized for myself. So that was the kind of uh, the most regular treatment that I had. And mm. I was in the compression um, all the time. I mean, I'm still, t you know, to this day, never not in compression because I felt that that was actually, I found that that was actually the best way to try and control this as much as possible. As soon as my compression is off within half an hour, I can actually feel my limbs starting to fill again and mm. it gets it's like a, it's like a sausage on a, um, it's like a sausage cooking. It feels wow. like it's going to pop and explode. Wow. Like that's literally, it gets like red and it gets hot and angry. Yes. Um, and you feel like you're, yeah, 
you feel like your limb is wants to explode. Um, mm. And I found that the compression definitely helps to control that feeling. So then, and then, the, yeah, well, I'm sure we'll get into it, but I've then had lots of surgical interventions yes. as well to try and support, I'm sure we'll get into Before it. we get to the surgical interventions, um, Asiko, on your side, mm-hmm. when it was at its worst, yeah. w- what does that, describe what that is for you? Like she said, it really burns. Um, it really burns and you, you feel this certain pain beneath your foot. Mm. and to a point where you can't even walk. Mm. So the only thing you need to do is just to sit down, ice it, elevate it, and try to compress it mm. because you you literally can't do anything. Mm. And that's how she described it. It really burns. You can even see it from when you look at it. Mm. It's bloodshot red. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And uh, on your side, the worst of, of, of your... Uh, lymphedema what what was that like yeah so at at its worst my right leg was five and a half kilograms heavier wow. than my left leg wow. but to give you an idea basically from the knee most of mine was from the knee down I did have some in the thigh area but most was from the knee down basically my my kind of from the knee down was double my one leg was double the size of the other Mm. Um, and yeah, it, it was weighed five and a half extra kilograms, which mm. was a huge amount. Um, and it was very unsightly. I couldn't, I couldn't wear pants at all. I couldn't wear normal shoes at all. I, I was always in long dresses and skirts, which meant in winter I absolutely froze. Mm. I couldn't wear a closed shoe at all. Um, I got to the stage where even walking was very difficult. So I'm a very mm. active person. I run half marathons, marathons and all sorts. And I got mm. to the stage where I, I could not do that because mm. my hip, the pain in my hip from carrying this extra weight on the one side was so, so, so severe mm. um, that at its worst, I pretty much couldn't walk or, or every mm. step was um, was incredibly painful. Mm. Yeah, it's, it sounds a lot because I think I just want to paint a picture for those of us that aren't experiencing it mm. as to the seriousness of what you're going through. Um, um, Simone, if this is untreated, I mean, you you could describe for us what you experience between the pain and the discomfort and all of those things. But what is the worst that can happen if it just remains untreated? Yeah, so you'll start to, you, you, you will probably most likely start to get something called cellulitis, which is an um, inflammation of the tissue. I mean, you can die from cellulitis. So that is yes. extreme inflammation of the tissue. You have to go into hospital to get treated with IV antibiotics. Mm. And if that is left untreated, you, yeah, you can, it can be incredibly, incredibly serious. In my case, I was heading to landing up being in a wheelchair and not actually having any mobility, not wow. being able to walk, landing up having to have hip replacements and all that sort of thing. Um, because the impact on my body was just becoming so incredibly mm. severe. Have you ever had um, any permanent damage done from, you know, the the more severe uh, moments that you experienced? Or was all of it reversible with the treatment? So um, only post this recent surgical treatment I've had um, has there been, so so my hip pain was getting really, really bad and Mm. I was worried it would actually never get better, never get better. Post the surgical intervention I had last year, my hip pain is completely gone. Yes. Which is absolutely amazing. I'm about to run a marathon in a week's time. So, I mean, I am, yeah, I'm the fittest and the healthiest and the most mobile I think I've ever been in my mm. life, which is amazing. And I've got the, the leg, the leg remains quite kind of, you know, it's not, it's not pretty, but that's fine. Um, and you do get the skin, kind of lymphedema skin starts to break down after a period of time. Mm. So you can see like around my toes and stuff, the skin quality has changed. Mm. Um, but that's really, really minimal. It's kind of, it's really not something I, mm. I can even complain about. So I would say that fortunately for me, um, as long as I'm completely compliant with what mm. I need to do, um, I, yeah, I'm, I, live a, I live a good life mm. now. Any permanent um, damage to your body? Um, I wouldn't really say. I mean, she didn't mention the skin. My skin yes. is very different as to what it was before. And now I have certain lines that don't leave from the from the burning. Mm. And it goes to show that it has been bigger than it is mm. right now. Mm. But besides that, 
I'm just grateful to be walking, to be alive, mm. because it could get worse, and some people even have it mm. way worse than I do. So mm. I think this is enough for me. Um, Simone, so your journey, I mean, you've been with this um, a lot longer. Did it affect any other parts or any other systems in your body, like your reproductive system or anything else? Or really was it what you've described so far about drainage happening in the leg and it didn't really uh, affect much more than your hips and, and all the other things you've already described? Yeah, so probably the biggest impact was actually psychological mm. um, and how you feel about yourself. Um, so th it really did impact me from that perspective. You know, I I'm very embarrassed because, you know, people do stare at you because they're like, wow, you know, what is wrong with that person? What is wrong with their leg? And you see people staring at you all the time. You never want to get into a swimming costume. You don't want to swim at the beach. You don't want to swim in the sea. You're sitting there, you know, in long dresses. And, um, and you know, my, my son wouldn't couldn't understand why I couldn't just play normally with him, why I couldn't just easily get down onto the floor and engage with him. Mm. And because my mobility was just too badly impaired. Um, so I did land up having reproduction issues and that sort of thing, but that was actually not from the lymphedema. It was from the cancer treatment mm. itself. Um, so I can't blame the lymphedema for that. Um, but um, what is interesting is that my lymphedema was definitely aggravated because my son was born via C-section. Mm. Um, and what we hadn't realized, so he was born post my lymphedema diagnosis. Mm. And what we hadn't realized is, and my lymphedema up until the time he was born was actually really under control. It was mm. dealt with, it was under control and um, yeah, we were in a good place. And then what we hadn't realized is that the lymph fluid had actually learned to reroute through my pelvic area. And so mm. when I had the C-section, when he was born, we cut through all of those new lymph, um, lymph kind of, channels that mm. had been formed and literally overnight my leg blew up wow. and it was from that point um which is now eight years ago that I really started to struggle mm. so for the 18 months before that had been completely under control but mm. because of that c-section that's really kind of what took me over the edge actually and I'm assuming which nobody anticipated yes and I'm assuming obviously any other medical interventions um because the doctors can't predict what, how, how the system is recalibrating itself can still, can still affect the drainage system. Exactly. Yes. Is it possible that it can now come up in a different leg or suddenly be in your arms? So for me, probably unlikely because it's secondary lymphedema. Yes. If it was primary lymphedema, absolutely. Primary lymphedema means that your lymphatic system in your body is not working properly. Mm. So it may start off in one leg, but it could then move to another leg or move to an arm. In my case, um, probably, yeah, probably unlikely in that it is, it is um, localized to the area that has had the lymph um, trauma. Yeah, yeah. What about in your case, Sika? Yeah. Could it suddenly surface up in a different limb? Like I said, it did start with my left leg and now has gone to my right leg. Mm. So the thing is, the only measures I can take right now is reducing it. Mm. I have no control over whether or not... In the next five years, it could be in my arm mm. or it could be my, on my other leg, even mm. more than it is right now. So mm. it's more about reducing right now while I still can. So are you experiencing it currently in both legs or did it move from one leg to the other? Both legs. Both legs, but yes. But the left leg has been there, has been the most consistent, okay. as I can say, in the swelling. Yes. And the right leg is occasionally, depending on the weather or... Mm the tension I put on my right leg. Yes. Yeah. So what are some of the lifestyle things that you've had to change mm. to deal with having lymphedema? So I have to be very cautious when it comes to liquid intake. I can't drink more than, you know, I'm supposed to or required mm. to as a mm. human because more liquid intake could mean more swelling. Mm. And... In terms of shoes, unfortunately, I can't have the luxury of wearing any kind of shoe. Uh, mostly flat shoes and heels are a good way to reduce the swelling, but mm. to me, it creates discomfort. Mm. I can't wear heels all the time. It hurts. Mm. It swells even more. And right now, I'm very limited. I mostly just wear sneakers mm. and flats, mm. literally slide-ins as that's the only shoes I wear. Mm, mm. So, yeah, those, I would say, are the most changes I've had. 
Have you ever had a day where your mobility was so compromised that walking was not an option? Walking was not an option. Going outside wasn't even an option. Yeah. I had to stay at home and elevate it the whole day yes. because I couldn't do anything. Yes. So, yes. yeah, I have those days, especially in summer. Yes. And in your case, uh, Simone? Yeah, so also um, heat definitely makes it worse. Yes. Um, so in humid places, I can feel my leg much, much, much worse. It's easier in winter, even though I'm cold, because I can't wear, can't wear warm clothes. Yes. It definitely kind of feels more controlled in winter. Um, at, you know, as he here mentioned, heels are just a no-no. Heels mm. makes it so much worse. I mean, I can't even get my foot into a heel, but when I still could, mm. um, that would just also exacerbate mm. the swelling um, dramatically. Exercise for me definitely helps. Um, so running, kind of, you know, um, strength training, that kind of thing definitely helps my um, the quality of the leg and kind of my mobility. Mm. Um, cycling is bad because you're leaning over and actually blocking the lymph, um, mm. lymph channels interestingly enough, in the groin area. So for me, that was that was bad for it. Okay. Um, and from your side, Simone, final, final words or anything that you'd like South Africans to know about your situation and your journey? Yeah. So 18 months ago, I had a debulking surgery. So what had happened is that the lymph fluid had changed into adipose fatty tissue. And mm. so there was therefore no way to reduce the leg because it was no longer fluid. It was this very dense tissue. Wow. And so six years ago, I embarked on a journey to find a doctor who would be able to help. Um, and there were no doctors at the time available in South Africa. But the man who had pioneered this debulking surgery was in Sweden. His name's Dr. Brawson. And so I contacted Dr. Brawson and I said, this is my story. I need your help. And he said, well, you can come to Sweden and I can help you. And I said, well, that's probably not going to be an option. Mm. Um, and he said, well, actually, I teach doctors the surgery. So if you can find a doctor and a lymphedema therapist to come to Sweden, I will train them. And they can then come back and do the treatment for you in South Africa. And so it took me about four years to find a doctor who was interested enough to um, take on doing this because they obviously had to fund themselves to, to go over to Sweden and be taught. Um, and I managed to find a remarkable doctor, called, a vascular surgeon called Dr. Laura Redman. Um, who was who was also assisted by a lymphedema therapist called Susie Davy, and they went to Sweden um, almost two years ago now to be taught this debulking procedure. They came back, and um, we actually then didn't even have the machine available in Africa at all to be able to do this procedure because it's mm -hmm. a very special type of machine that's required. So, luckily enough for me, my doctor Laura, um, she actually imported the machine so that she would be able to do the surgery. And um, on the 6th of March of last year, she did this debulking surgery for me, the first one ever to be done in Africa. Mm. Um, and it has been so massively successful. Mm. So she removed five kilograms of adipose tissue from my leg. Wow. Um, and literally overnight, my life changed. Um, it's not a cure for lymphedema. Very importantly, it's not a cure. But what it did was it removed this adipose tissue that had built up in my leg. Um, and now I am, am in, I have to be in very, very heavy custom compression um, all the time, day and night. Mm. But as long as I'm in that compression, which essentially controls the leg, doesn't let the lymph fluid build up again to be able to change into adipose tissue, um, my condition should be largely um, completely controlled. And so the, the last 18 months of my life has been completely different. So I would like South Africa to know that there is this treatment now available in South Africa. It's not, it's, not, um, it's not appropriate for all people with lymphedema. You need to get to the stage where your lymph fluid that's stagnant in your leg has changed to adipose tissue because that's what the debulking surgery does is it removes the adipose tissue. But if you are a um, good candidate for this surgery, it truly is life-changing. Sikhe, final words that you would love South Africans and viewers to know. So I'd like them to know that if you feel like you have something similar, it's best to go check it out because mm. um, you never know. And prolonging something like this could lead to bigger risks that mm. can't be cured in the next five years. Mm. And, you know, ever since I started going, becoming more open with my condition, people on my social media have been reaching out, telling me that they thought they were the only people going through this. Mm. They couldn't put a name or a face or mm. information to what they were going through. So... 
it's okay. There might not be a cure now, but don't be discouraged. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So no cure, but there is treatment there available is treatment, that can assist. There's ways, there's measures to help reduce it. Yes. So yeah. Yes. Uh, Simone and Sika, thank you so much to the both of you for chatting to us thank and you. for just, you know, creating some kind of awareness to your own stories on lymphedema. I know that many people are not aware of what it yeah. is, but also there may be those that are, are sitting silently suffering and mm -hmm. in pain and agony. And now uh, they might have had an opportunity to be opened up to something that they could be suffering from. So thank you so much to the thank both you. of you. Thank you very much. Hashtag unpacked with Rele Bukhile. Let us know your thoughts on today's discussion. There are so many rare and interesting illnesses and conditions that people are suffering from. But like our guests today have shown, you don't have to suffer in silence. You can actually live and conquer and go on to even run another half marathon if that's what you love to do. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a good night. Next time on Unpacked. I was 12 when I started mm. boxing, yeah. Mm. I think I was one of the first black boys to do ballet at the National School of the Arts. Mm. After understanding that it was an international career, that is immediately where my eyes were set on. Mm. Uh, you know what, I would like to come and fight in, in, in the States. It was just an upcoming fight. I was getting over th uh, 30,000 and in South Africa was getting 1,000 rand. for watching Unpacked with Rilip Khile Mamoja. Make sure you subscribe to my channel where you can get to watch more episodes. But more importantly, you can be part of our online community. Comment down below, share with us who you'd like to see on the show, what story you'd like us to discuss. We love engaging with you. Keep it coming and don't forget to subscribe.